Hello, Valipara Foundation. Thank you so much for asking me to be part of your Naturenomics Congress. Um, you call it Naturenomics. I like the term. I often call it nature-based solutions. And I'm Daisy Redrissenaar. I'm working a lot on aligning the economy, ecology, and the human spirit, as I call it. And nature-based solutions is a big part of that. Uh, I'm very glad that a lot is happening in this field. Last year, there have been big reports of, by the United Nations and the European Union and the World Bank about nature-based solutions. And they are taking off, I think. Let me share my screen with you and let me show you what they are. This is an illustration from the IUCN. The IUCN illustrates it like this, and I explain it often as um, solutions for humans. They create multiple values for humans, for economies, and they create multiple values for biodiversity, for nature. So if you combine them, then we can really have an economy that matters. Our economy as it is now is based on scarcity and ecology is always based on uh, abundance. Uh, ecology is always abundant. Nature doesn't know any, any different. So if we take ecology as a basis for our economy, we will be able to create an abundant economy as well. For me, that always starts with ecosystem restoration. Um, the years that I've been working now in this field, I've done a lot of ecosystem restoration and it's really possible to restore ecosystems to make sure that the degraded areas, the overgrazed areas, the polluted areas by um, fertilizers, too much fertilizers and um, um, chemicals, chemical sprays, that we restore them. And you see it in big scale as well. It's like the Lost Plateau in China. It's a, a, a whole area, the size of the Netherlands, my country. And it has been restored. And now the farmers really know how to create their crops like that. And they have food and they have resources for products. So how will it um, work? I think we need a lot of systemic design. It all starts with designing the systems, designing the waste, designing without pollution, designing in such a way that ecosystems are happy and the humans are happy. We also should show that it's possible because there are lots of companies doing it. Um, and it's very important to experiment further. There's still a lot we don't know. There's still a lot of science that's needed and we need to do. So how can we break from traditional industrialization? Um, I think the most important thing is that we think in value and not just in money. We create multiple values with one business case. We can use synergy instead of scale to build value upon value upon value in a business case. And it's very important to do it in a local setting because everything we create should be embedded in local ecosystems and in local culture. Innovation and technology should have one focus, and that's life. We should not create the technologies that destroy life. We should really think just life. And then we can create a lot. It doesn't all have to be technology either. We can do a lot of design solutions. And um, do it smart. Do it smart in the ways that nature teaches us. This year I was in Indonesia in a project where they 
create a perfect environment for um, restoring mangrove forests. Um, they built dams and then the sediments are coming in and being trapped. And then the seeds in the soil will germinate and will regrow into uh, forests of mangroves. So that's a really good design solution because they also combine that with uh, organic fish farming and other ways of creating things with the forest and with the ecosystems. Also, I see a lot of innovation nowadays with local abundantly available materials like bamboo, like industrial hemp, like seaweeds. We can make fabrics with that. We can um, uh, make cosmetics. We can make food and uh, animal feed. So it's all possible. On a macroeconomic level, I think it's very important that governments make radical choices and invest uh, the money to unleash the businesses that we really want. Help them for a, a, a big yeah, a bit of a start because the startups, they really need uh, some, some investment money and then they can create a business cases that will stand on their own and really be resilient. Then we can also phase out what we don't want anymore. And we should be rather radical in that, I think. In 2016, I was in Aliado and Aliado is in the smallest Canary Island in Spain. And we were there with a big group of the blue economy, all entrepreneurs, all um, yeah, working in one field or another in this new, uh, yeah, naturenomics. In Aliado, they have already done it for about 25 years. And they started out with energy and water. They have made renewable energy and they merged the energy and water company so they don't compete but find solutions together. They make fresh water by desalination and use the energy for that. And also a lot of the proceeds, the revenues of that company stay in the local community because the community owns part of the company. So a lot of the money stays in the system and can build new projects in the economy. They restored their ecosystems with Terra Preta in eight years time, made it organic. And then now they're building all kinds of value from winemaking to um, fisheries, they restore the oceans. Um, so yeah, it's a really good example. And it was very inspiring for me to see that it can happen in an area. And at this moment, I see a lot of areas now, yes, yeah, starting out, trying it, um, starting with one project or the first three, and then, yeah, who knows what will be unleashed. In your area, you have the Assam tea plantation, uh, an organic tea plantation, and I hope there might be a, a, a in connection to a lot of the other naturenomics ways to do stuff. So I really hope it takes off from there. So what are the steps for a resilient local economy? I think it all starts with ecosystem restoration. I think it's also very important that we are um, self-sustaining on basic needs. This is the basic needs. We can really create a very active self-sustaining economy on that. We can ask caring tourists to come and um, contribute to our economy and we will be restoring ecosystems. I think that's the most important thing to do. And I really hope that it will take off in your area in the Eastern Himalayas. And if you want to reach out, um, just do so. I can be found on LinkedIn and on Medium where I share a lot of stories on the projects that I do. My name is Desiree Driesenaar. Under that name, you can also reach out and I'm really happy to hear from you and to see, to see how it's 
really building up in the eastern Himalayas. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.